Our world is rife with mysteries and enigmas. Through the years, a myriad of wondrous events have occurred and thousands of amazing discoveries have been made. We can never be quite sure what lies beyond the horizon. Between archaeological wonders and the rapid development of technology, there is an unbound potential for our future. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at recent discoveries. A mysterious 60-foot hole appeared on the side of Mount Shasta. Over 10 years ago, a random hole appeared on the side of Mount Shasta, seemingly overnight. It was built using a simple makeshift pulley system and reached about 60 feet deep. It was as if someone tried to dig into the volcano, which surprised the locals and Forest Service. The offenders had only left behind a few buckets, a smart water bottle and a ladder to signify their presence. For the past decade, locals and mystery enthusiasts have been trying to figure out the reason and cause for this strange hole. There are currently three main theories to explain it. The first theory is related to the legend of Lemuria. Some town inhabitants believe that there is a lost continent underneath Mount Shasta called Lemuria, with its capital city, Telos. It is named after the word Lima because an English zoologist in the 19th century theorised that the lemurs travelled to Madagascar from India using this lost continent. For some reason, it ended up buried underneath a mountain range in California. Some people have even reported seeing robed Lemurian citizens travelling through the mountains and visiting the town's shops. The diggers might have been attempting to reach the lost city through the hole. The mountain is also considered sacred to the First Nation tribe, Winamem Wintu, indigenous to the area surrounding the McLeod River in Northern California. The people have a spiritual connection to the mountain and regard themselves as its watchers because their tribe came out of the mountain thousands of years ago. The second theory regarding the hole is that the culprits were digging for Native American artifacts. This area has been rife with looting for many years, as artifacts can sell for a very high price. It is illegal to dig without a permit, resulting in fines of up to $20,000 and potential jailing for up to one year. Police explained that looters typically work at night and dig using the same pulley method seen with the hole. However, the Forest Service and Winamem Wintu tribe do not believe it was looters. It is improbable any artifacts are in the area since leaving items would disrespect the spirits and mountain. The Forest Service argued for the third theory, someone was mining for gold. There was a bit of gold found in the town's relative area during the gold rush era, so the offenders might have tried to find some. However, the location of the hole is unlikely to provide any gold because of its volcanic geology. Regardless of which theory you believe, the case is still unsolved. No one figured out who dug the hole, and the rangers were quick to fill it to prevent any accidents. Whether it was to find a lost continent, Native American artifacts, or gold, it seems that it will always remain a mystery. Graves of nearly 600 cats and dogs in ancient Egypt may be the world's oldest pet cemetery. Nearly 600 cats and dogs lie in a cemetery on the western coast of the Red Sea in Egypt. The tombs are over 2,000 years old and show that the animals were buried with their collars. Archaeologists have assumed that this place, discovered 10 years ago and which had not been studied in depth until now, is the oldest known pet necropolis which pets were buried, with them saying that even then it seems animals were treated as a member of the family. The holy field appeared in dunes outside the city walls. Researchers from the Polish Academy of Sciences found it under a Roman garbage dump and believe the cemetery was used especially between the mid-1st to mid-2nd century AD when the west coast of Berenice was a bustling centre that traded ivory, fabrics and other luxury goods from India, Arabia and Europe. By 2017, the team led by Marta Osipinska had already unearthed the remains of about 100 animals, most of which were cats. Despite evidence showing that they had been cared for as pets, some archaeologists raised the possibility that the bones had been discarded as garbage. Now 585 skeletons have been found, which have been analysed in detail thanks to the help of a veterinarian who determined the cause of death, diet and even the health of the pets. 
The conclusion is that all these pets were carefully deposited in well-prepared pits, as explained in an article published in the journal World Archaeology. Many were also covered with textiles or ceramic pieces that formed a kind of sarcophagus. Cats, which accounted for 90% of the total remains, wore iron collars or other threaded glass and shells. But there were also dogs and two different species of macaque monkeys. Some of these animals came from outside the African continent. Among the pets buried at Berenice were many with injuries and illnesses that would have prevented their survival. The canines, which accounted for about 5% of the burials, tended to be older when they died. Many had lost almost all their teeth and suffered from joint degeneration. In the cemetery, however, not a single mummification was found, nor was there any trace of deliberate animal sacrifice or slaughter, something that was widespread in the Nile Valley. This space was a place with ambiguous cultural rules, say specialists. It was not very Egyptian, despite its location, but not very Roman either, despite political domination and economic control, they conclude. Sacsayhuaman in Peru The word Sacsayhuaman comes from the Quechua language, translates roughly to royal eagle or more literally the place where the hawk was satiated. It is thought that it gained this name due to the high presence of these birds in the area where the structure was built. Sacsayhuaman is an architectural complex in the city of Cusco, Peru. The building was erected by the Incas in the 15th century under the 9th Incan leader, Pashacuti, Inca, Yupanqui and his successors. A project as massive as this necessitated the hard work of at least 20,000 labourers, which were divided by the thousands and given jobs such as quarrying duties, digging trenches and laying the foundations of this huge monument. This fortress is the largest built by the Incas. It was constructed on an elevated rocky head facing the northern marshy ground outside the Incan capital, Cusco. The Incas were known as master stonemasons, and their abilities are demonstrated wonderfully in this building. It was built using dry stone walls and boulders that were fit tightly together using mortar. Although they did not use anything to cement the stones together, their mechanics ensured that the building stood strong and stable. The huge blocks of stone making up the temple were shaped using nothing but harder rocks and bronze tools. Based on the marks left on these stones, researchers believe they were mostly pounded into shape rather than being cut. The blocks must have been moved around using ropes, levers, poles and earth-made ramps. This is evident due to the indentations that remained on the stones even after they were fit into place in the building. It was built to withstand earthquakes and the damage from such natural disasters through the interlocking of the blocks and sloped walls, which maximized protection. It is definitely apparent that this proved to be successful, as the building has survived over 500 years of earthquakes. The area also contains a variety of buildings, such as residential spaces, towers, holy places, warehouses, roadways and aqueducts. The positioning and placing of the area is similar to other Incan locations, like the Machu Picchu. It stands as a testament to the Incas' skills in architecture and their ability to create a structure that worked in harmony with the natural landscape of the place. It is simply incredible to see the remains of history and the magnificent skills and abilities of those who lived before us, and to be able to witness the architectural pursuits that were accomplished without the use of modern technology and resources. Gaspar and Miguel Corte Real At the dawn of the 1500s, two brotherly explorers went missing on their journeys. Gaspar and Miguel Corte Real were the first amongst sailors and captains to travel the northeastern coast of America. The Corte Real family were a noble Portuguese house. Gaspar was allegedly the more aggressive of the brothers. In 1499, he heard that King Manuel I granted John Fernandez the right to lead an expedition to the North Atlantic as the king wished to control the Northwest Passage to India and Spice Islands. However, Fernandez did not take the grant immediately. So Gaspar took the chance and gained royal permission to set out on an expedition of his own in the summer of 1500. He took a trio of ships with him, 
funded by his noble family. Gaspar Cotteriel explored the shoreline of Greenland firstly, meeting with the native population. The harsh winter icebergs caused him and his men to leave the land and return to Portugal in the winter of 1500. In May 1501, he set out on another expedition to discover the unknown lands in the northwest with his brother Miguel, and landed in Labrador, exploring the coast. Miguel returned home with two ships to report their wondrous discoveries after they went 600 miles inland, expecting Gaspar to return soon thereafter. When he didn't arrive, Miguel set out to find him on a rescue mission funded by the king with three ships in 1502. Gaspar Cotarreal mysteriously disappeared on the shores of Labrador seemingly overnight. Miguel's three ships ended up in Newfoundland and decided to split up and reconnect later on. Two of the three ships did as instructed, meeting up at the agreed place on the agreed day. Miguel's ship was never found, assumed lost at sea during a suspected storm. Concerned for the noble brothers, the king himself financed a third rescue mission in 1503, banning their third brother from going and instead sent a government official. The men were never found. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.